The 2019 general election has produced an extraordinary result. The Conservatives have got their biggest number of seats since 1987. Labour, their lowest number of seats since 1935. So a very bad night for Labour. Actually also an extremely bad night for the Liberal Democrats who after all triggered or helped trigger this general election. They've not only lost uh, their leader but all hope of really becoming a major force in British politics. But if we now look forward to the composition of the new Conservative Party, I think that is a, an intriguing way of thinking through how will this government tackle Brexit? Because the Conservative Party now has MPs sitting in the northeast of England, the northwest. All three constituencies in Stoke on Trent are now held by the Conservative Party, something that would have been inconceivable in the past. Seats in North Wales, particularly in all these cases, areas where there's a lot of manufacturing and agriculture and production industries. And as we move towards Brexit negotiations, Boris Johnson has now got to consider MPs who've got those kind of industries in their constituencies who definitely don't want a hard Brexit. So in a sense, those voices will become much louder than the uh, European research group type who previously were able to dictate terms about a harder Brexit. So it looks as if although Brexit will definitely go ahead on January the 31st, the composition of the Conservative Party and frankly Boris Johnson's own uh, could have gone leave or remain views about Brexit probably are now taking us towards a softer version of Brexit which might actually be easier to get through and into a deal during 2020 than was otherwise expected and thereafter of course give slightly less room perhaps for free trade deals or freer trade deals with the rest of the world. So Brexit will now start uh, and of course the big issue we will face during 2020 is how far uh, the UK and the EU can actually finalise a deal in that year.